Friends, welcome to the district. Well, technically Northern Virginia. Uh, we're on the George Washington Parkway, heading east into Washington, D.C., technically going to the airport right now. Uh, and I wanted to do an Ask Moto Man segment with you guys, specifically in the Nissan Titan, because there's some things I wanted to revisit in the Nissan Titan that has come up since I put out the half-ton episode. And I also wanted to get to some of your questions. So with that, let's dive into an Ask Moto Man TV from the district. Okay, as we dive off into this Ask Moto Man TV segment, I want to point out one thing here. This Turkey Run Park here, it's this amazing little park nestled into the woods here uh, that's just north of the parkway. I did a nice run there this morning. Uh, we'll come back to that. I'll save that for the fun fact. Anyway, let's dive into the business at hand, which is I wanted to revisit uh, some items about the Nissan Titan since we did the tech review and the full first drive review of the half ton. So number one, I wanted to cover the pricing. I normally don't cover pricing with you guys, mainly because I like to focus on the creative parts, the engineering parts, design, all kind of stuff. But here I feel it important because this is a hyper competitive segment. Uh, so Nissan, they actually released the pricing after we filmed uh, both episodes. Uh, so the, the gasoline version of the Nissan Titan half ton is what we're talking about. Right now what we're in is an XD Cummins like super duper platinum model, which I love this thing. I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, anyway, the pricing starts for a crew cab, the base, you know, the basic, probably the base work truck crew cab, $35,000. Uh, and then jumps up to this trim level, which is the platinum trim level, but the gas crew cab half ton, 55,000. So there's quite a range. There's like the low grade, the mid grade, and then there's the high grade. But there's one really important thing I wanted to point out here with you guys. Uh, do you remember in the full first drive review of this one we did in Arizona, uh, the Titan Crew Cab XD Cummins uh, turbo diesel, basically the 2500 equivalent? That was a Pro 4X model. Now, they do offer the Pro 4X, which is like the off-road model. They offer that in the half ton as well. And that thing, 45000 And I got to say, if you didn't tell me the pricing on any of these things, I would choose the Pro 4X. So from my point of view, I would say the Pro 4X is the value. Now, granted, most people would want the tougher suspension that that thing has. That's why I would want it. Uh, but I do find it very interesting that that is kind of like the middle of the range between the 35 and the 55. Anyway, let's put that aside. I do want to bring up something that came up in the, the both the tech review as well as the full first drive review. You guys, a lot of you made these comments, and this think of it as this is an answer to those questions. You asked about the sunroof. Now, you guys know me. I am totally Mr. Sunroof. Like, I couldn't own a car without a sunroof. Granted, I'm more of a convertible guy, um, but I couldn't own a car without a sunroof. Uh, so I took your question because I didn't know if they even were going to offer one, especially now that they have both the half ton as well as the 2500 equivalent. And it turns out, I spoke to Nissan, there's no sunroof on offer. Not a little sunroof, not a panoramic, no nothing. Now, this is something, even though they officially said, no, there is no sunroof on offer, Something tells me if we get on these guys, they'll change that. So I think we should write in and I'll put more comments. And I want to bring this up. Nissan is incredibly good about reading those comments. Like, they, they kind of get what you and I do in these episodes, that I ask you guys a questions, and you guys are actually providing a lot of like free market research. So I found, when I've spoken to all these guys you've seen on the show, they've actually read the comments before I even showed them the episode, sent them the link. They went and looked at it on their own. So I think if we get on them, they'll change this thing about the sunroof, and I think it should be a panoramic sunroof, being that's where the industry is going. Anyway, let's put that aside, and let's press on to one more thing about the Titan. So I was here doing a number of things. We shot that Kia Cadenza, and then there were some other projects we had to do with this. And for the first time, I've used one of these things. And to put aside just the film, I've actually used one of these things for a specific purpose of what it's designed for, like I went to a Home Depot uh, and moved some stuff. And I gotta tell you, it was kind of amazing how like per, like no problem it was. Like I've, I've used 1500s before, and granted this is a 2500, this one here. But now that I've had the experience of taking it on road, off road, driving it in traffic and parking it, 
here's kind of my take on the daily usability. Um, if I were living like in DC, New York, LA, where I live in LA now, I wouldn't want the 2500. This thing is a complete and utter pain in the ass to park. Other than that, totally usable. Even with the bigger engine, the diesel with the recirculating ball. Um, but you know, when I'm rich and famous and I finally get that house in Vail, Colorado, this is probably what I'd have in my driveway, provided there is a sunroof. So let's put that aside, and I want to move on to your questions now. So I want to start with a question that came in on the Kia Cadenza episode, the one we just shot here, the tech review. Uh, there was a full first drive review coming up by the time you see this that you would have seen the full first drive review. Again, uh, like the sunroof question in this set, the Titans, a lot of you posed the same point, which was, oh, this Kia Cadenza, it's so beautiful now, I like it a lot, only problem is I want a rear-wheel drive V6. And here's my answer, you. Kia already offers it. It's called the K900. You can get it in a V6, you can get it in a V8. Uh, and I would go so far as to saying that the Kia design folks probably have the next one already done, and it probably benefits from the same sharper styling that the Cadenza benefits from. And I would even go one step further and say that the Kia is going to be offering a car that's not the K900. I can't really tell you all the details about it, but you probably have seen the spy shots. And let's just say, I think it's going to be probably one of the cooler car next, cars next year. And I'll go so far as saying, I, I would even be a betting man and say it's going to be a rear wheel drive car. So uh, let's come back to that. Uh, and then let's move on to the next question. Next question came in via Twitter uh, from a gentleman by the name of Rasu uh, Shrista, Rasu Shrista. Uh, my sincere apologies if I have butchered your name. I fully understand because my given name is incredibly hard to pronounce, and I grew up with people just tormenting me about my terrible last name. So my apologies if I have butchered your last name. But his question is actually very good. It's from the E300 episode, and his question is, what would I choose, or my opinion, between an E300 or a Tesla Model S. Now, a little bit behind the scenes here, I like to answer these questions as if what would I do? Me, living in Los Angeles, and my kind of driving. And my very clear, honest answer here is definitely the E300 all day long. And let me tell you why. Design, it is really that simple. Uh, while I think the Tesla is a good looking car, I don't love its design, especially what they've done now that they borrowed the front end from the Model X. And I totally get it from a cerebral point of view that an electric car does not need to look like a normal car and it does not need a grill. But our, des our like trained eye on design is not where the Tesla can be, which is why I think the i3 is one of the ugliest cars on the planet. It is what an electric car should look like, and I just think it's ugly. So the Tesla, especially the new one with that front end, I just don't like the way it looks. The other big thing that I don't like about the Tesla is the interior, and follow me on this one for a minute. I actually do like the design of the interior. I think it's a very nice interior. It's kind of screwed together okay, but my big hang up on that is it's got that big 17 inch screen turned on its side and no buttons. I don't think it is a smart idea to have a two to say 5,000 pound vehicle that can go 80 miles an hour normally and you have a touch screen with haptic feedback. I think that is entirely unsafe. Like this is a better example of what needs to be done. These are big chunky buttons. Granted these are a little bit too much because they're designed to work with gloves. But if you notice, I don't just give Tesla this crap, I give Cadillac and others that have gone to nothing but these screens with a haptic feedback, where, yes, uh, Q is a problem, and I have said things about Q that needs to be changed, but not the usual course you get from other people. Like, I think Q inherently is actually a good system. The problem at first was it was too slow, and it just didn't work, and it didn't have the buttons. Well, they changed the processor so it actually works, and now it's actually speedy to the point where you can do the pinch to zoom thing. But here's the problem. You still don't have the, the repetitive buttons. I think you need knobs and you need buttons like this. Like, I want a volume knob. I, this thing that they have now in the, in, the, in the queue, it's just terrible. And that's one of the big things. I wouldn't want to own a car that's all haptic feedback. Then there's the, the third thing that, frankly, would actually, I would buy a Tesla for, and that is the infrastructure. And if I'm honest, there is an infrastructure now in, if you live in, on, on the coasts basically. So in my case, 
I live in Los Angeles, I couldn't get away with the excuse of, no, I don't want a Tesla because I want to be able to drive to San Francisco or I want to drive to Phoenix, as you know, it's not from ASU, so I would want to go to my alma mater or Vegas, not that I gamble, but let's say I want to go to Vegas. That is no longer an excuse because there's an infrastructure, sort of an infrastructure. But I don't think that Tesla works in a place like Wisconsin. Like let's, say for, let's say for the sake of discussion, I lived in Chicago and I had a cottage up in way northern Wisconsin or wanted to go to the UP. You smoked, it just doesn't work there. So that's a question you have to kind of answer on your own. I can't answer that one for you. So hopefully that answers your question, Rasu. Really a good question. And uh, let me know what you end up getting because uh, I personally think the, the E-Class is one of the better looking cars out there. Okay, so just as an aside here, before I finish Rasu's question, I can't come to DC without showing you guys a little bit of DC. So we're coming up onto the mall here. We're in Arlington right now. The cemetery is right behind us here. Uh, so we're gonna come around, we're gonna go over the bridge and say we're actually in DC. So we shot this Ask Moto Man segment in DC. Uh, but let me finish up uh, Rasu's question. I, I would like to know what you end up getting, because uh, apparently you want to choose one of these two cars, and I, you know, I'd be a, I, I would be remiss in not telling you I would choose the more luxury model, like the stand-up hood ornament in Mercedes. Yes, I'm an old man that way. Um, but I would like the, the luxury model with the, the, the much like warmer tone interior with the satin wood finish. That's truly the one I would get with some high spec stuff. And I most likely, and again, full disclosure, I would wait for the E43 or the E63 because I'd want more power. I don't think the four cylinder works very well in that vehicle. So let's put that aside. And here we are, we are now getting basically into, we are in officially into the district. The Kennedy Center is over there. Georgetown is up there. If we continue down here, which we will a little bit, uh, this is where we get into the mall. So you can see the Washington Monument there. This really, I gotta tell you, it's a fantastic city. I don't know if I'd really ever live here, but it truly is a fantastic city. Like, take a look at this. There, I, you guys know I'm a major distance runner. Uh, and let's go, um, where are we gonna go? You know what, let's go a little bit into the mall here and then we'll turn around and go back. We're stuck in a little bit of traffic, but I want you guys to see this because this is really pretty. And that's the reason why I put the camera up on the, on the top of the car. And just as an aside, for those of you that are going to complain that, oh my God, show us the outside of the car, that's not what these Ask Moto Man segments are about. There are like now probably eight episodes of a Titan, both on-road, off-road, doing all sorts of things. You can see plenty of outside the car uh, there. And so go to those, check out those episodes, both the 2500, which is the XD, as well as the 1500 half ton. Let's go over here. Anyway, uh, enough of me complaining about that. Okay, so as we get going here, we're kind of on the northern side of the mall. So basically this frames DC. The White House is up there, the Capitol building is up there, and Arlington is back that way. So now we're passing the Federal Reserve over here, and then a little bit farther down the, uh, the mall is the Smithsonian. And just as an aside, let me pull over here so you guys can see the mall a little bit here. You can see the, the Washington Monument. Um, I did a Periscope tour of the, uh, the Air and Space Museum, the one, the Udvar Pavilion, which is out by Dulles Airport. If you guys want to see that, I shot it on Periscope. I'm going to forewarn you, it is, what, 240p? It was a 46 minute tour. If you want to see it, I will put it up on YouTube. Let me know if you got, you know, in the comments below if you guys want to see it or via Twitter and Instagram, Moto Man TV, all one word. Okay, so I just turned around and we are passing the Federal Reserve yet again, which is just there. Maybe we can go there and they can give us some money. Okay, as we make our way around the mall again, that's the Lincoln Memorial here. And now we're looking back towards the west and we're gonna make our way over the bridge into Arlington here. And while we do that, you can actually see a bit of the cemetery over there if you look a little bit. Uh, so let's come across the bridge here. That takes you into Georgetown up there and past the Kennedy Center. Um, anyway, let's go around. We're on the back side of the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, so while we're going over the bridge here, and isn't this stunning? Look at how beautiful, even with the clouds, it's really a beautiful day. Oh my God, look. Maybe that is Marine One, do you think? Maybe the, no, maybe it isn't. Yeah, one can only dream. That would be cool to have your own helicopter and your own 747. 
I think that would be the only redeeming quality of being the president. That is one job I would never want to have. Anyway, uh, let's go to the last question, Jorge Romani. Jorge Romani, he poses a very good question about the Genesis G90. It comes from that episode. A lot of you guys actually brought up the same point. Um, why doesn't the G90 have a panoramic sunroof? Actually, some of you were more colorful about the thing not having a panoramic sunroof. Uh, I did some discussions. And okay, check it out. I'm going around the circle here one more time because there's a plane taking off. I don't know if you guys can see that from here. It's banking from National Airport. One of the best approaches is National Airport. I love going in and out of National. Actually, I deliberately took a flight that had to stop, change planes, so I could actually see the city as I'm taking off. That's how I really am into planes. Uh, anyway, so we're going to go back to National Airport here. Hopefully, we'll miss the bus. Uh, so Jorge's question uh, brings up a point that I brought up with uh, the Hyundai folks, or Genesis folks. Their whole reasoning in not putting a panoramic sunroof in that car was because of sound. Their thinking was, if we have a panoramic sunroof, the car is going to be noisier. Now, I will give them that the car is incredibly quiet. It's as quiet as a Rolls Royce, I would argue. But here's the thing. I would give up a little quiet to get the panoramic sunroof. Now, of course, when I told them that, they were like, well, you would give up some structure. And that, I kind of call bull crap on that. Yeah, there is a structural piece here in the G90. They showed it to us. Uh, but most cars, like S-Classes, they have a structural piece here as well. And they just work it into the panoramic sunroof. So this is something I would definitely want to see in the G90 as a panoramic sunroof. I don't think we're going to see that changed in this generation car, maybe the next generation car. So hopefully that answers your question. And again, like Nissan, Hyundai, they are incredibly good about reading your comments, especially Hyundai. Like they come back to me and bring up a couple of questions about your questions. So I would go back to the episodes, both the tech review and the full first drive review, and leave the point and, and share it with them. So with that, we are getting to the airport here, and you can see the Washington Monument into the mall. This really, it, it is a fantastic city. Really is a nice city. I don't think I'd live here, but a fantastic city. Uh, by the way, I did a marathon in this city. I did the Marine Corps Marathon, one of the best endings ever. You literally, you run around Iwo Jima into a wall of Marines, and they give you your medal. Literally, a Marine gives you your medal. It's incredible. If you are a distance runner, you got to run it just for that. Uh, anyway, so I want to turn this around to you guys. I don't want to... Oh, another plane. This is a Delta 717. Actually, a little fun fact on that. Most of those are ex-ATA 717s. When um, Southwest acquired ATA, uh, Delta bought them literally out of the bargain bin for like next to no money whatsoever. So most of those are ex-ATA, ex-Southwest that are now running for Delta. Anyway, put that aside. You know I'm a plane geek. Oh, oh my God. This is a great place to watch planes take off. Okay, so that's an Embraer. Uh, that's a 175. American Airlines livery. New Amer I don't like the new American Airlines livery. You can see it's the airport over there. Anyway, I'm so excited about the AvGeek stuff. I haven't gotten the question. Uh, okay, so the question. Let's do the question. Uh, are you ready for an electric car? And, and this is more of, I want all of us to answer Rasu's question. Uh, tell me where you live, what region of the world, what you currently drive, and are you ready for an electric car? And don't just tell me yes or no. I want you to tell me why or why not. Like in my case, I actually could be ready for an electric car because the infrastructure is there. But maybe you do live in Chicago and have that proverbial place up in, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, I'll call it the UP of Michigan, and there is no infrastructure there. Uh, so let me know your choice, where you live, and why or why not you wouldn't be ready or would be ready for an electric car. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which has been updated from Apple iTunes or Google Play. And number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. So that, that Turkey Run Park that I told you I ran at this morning, I didn't know this. For all the years I've been coming to DC, I didn't know this, but I thought the Potomac River was the state line uh, between Maryland and Virginia. Turns out it's not. At that point, the state line is on the southern side of the river. So on the path I was running, I was literally running between Maryland and Virginia with every step. So 
With that, I'm going to end this with not only a bishpeta, but we spent a lot of time talking about a G90, and in front of us right now is a Hyundai Equus. And the guy actually has the VS500 badge on it. Very, very funny. Very funny. Okay, so with that, I believe we have completed yet another Ask Moto Man TV segment. Uh, get your questions in by using the hashtag Ask Moto Man TV. Ask Moto Man TV. Uh, you can do that with Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Until I see you next time, bis später.